Save the life of your child. Save the life of your child. Save the life of your child. Fornication and brought this child into the world. And now the mother wishes to go away with her sinfulness, with her crime against God. I think the stigma around abortion is one that is unfair. And believe. They have microphones with speakers, and then they're screaming into the microphone. And the sidewalk is small. It's this additional weight of things coming at them that are really negative. It's really, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, it's a lot to take in and see. And when we are able to get in front of the protesters to be able to help them see that we are with the clinic and can get them out, we basically become a shield for the patient. It can be really hard to not engage because they really say awful things. People practice homosexuality, but approve of homosexuality. You are deserving of death, Roman One time in particular, they were like staring at me for a good 10 minutes, just like berating me in Spanish, calling me a whore, a disgrace to my culture. We're taught to not engage at all. It's really just about seeing the patient and getting them in. I believe to be an activist, activism is rooted in love. That is what I stay grounded in when I do this work. My love for the movement and just my love for community. I'd never seen that before in my life, protesters in front of an abortion center. I didn't even know this was an issue. I thought it was completely accessible to everyone everywhere. I came back and was counter-protesting the protesters. An escort asked if I would be interested in ever becoming an escort. This just struck a chord with me. I try and come every weekend and as many days off through the week as I'm able to. It doesn't seem fair that the protesters are there harassing patients. They try and block the driveways, giving them false information on pamphlets. The protesters sometimes wear fake security outfits and costumes, mocking the patients, yelling at the patients. The protesters will compare us to the modern day Holocaust, calling us white supremacists, modern Nazis, they don't want the building here. They don't want the services done. They don't want the escorts here. One time I was on a connecting flight in the Midwest and sat on the aisle over from an extremist protester from the Philadelphia Women's Center. I said, wow, it's so crazy running into you. What are you doing here? She started preaching from her Bible. A steward came over and asked, hey guys, what's going on? She tapped him on the arm and he leaned down and she whispered something to him. He came back and had me removed from the flight. So I had to spend 12 hours overnight. My seizure medicine, everything was in a checked bag, never gave me a reason. The clinic escort's role is really to create a sense of calm, make sure that people know where the front door is, know that they can enter the building safely, and know that there's someone there that is just there to support them getting from the parking lot into the front door. We have a really firm non-engagement policy, so the clinic escort's job is to focus on the folks that are providing and the folks that are accessing abortion and not the people that are making a bunch of noise outside. Not every single person is gonna be a great candidate for clinic escorting or, or might not love that role. Having to stand outside and hear racist, sexist, hate speech, you know, from people consistently. 
not everyone is able to keep an even keel and not respond to that. My dad was one of the first volunteer escorts that I trained. I love him, I appreciate he's such a great supportive person, but he was one of the first people that I had that really struggled with the non-engagement policy. He even said he's, and I know it's not helpful, you know, for, for the clinic, for um, your patients when I'm out here and I'm going off and they're going off and it's, it's escalating. I'm so grateful that we have our clinic escort team, but I wish we didn't need them. A few years ago, my partner was working for Planned Parenthood, and she had to go through a couple protesters getting inside, and she was like, you know what? You should do something like this. And my first reaction was, this can't be happening in North Jersey. Progressive, blue state, like this shouldn't be a thing, and then, I was reminded that New Jersey is very diverse. That's all that's going on here is mothers who kill their own child. I'm somebody that can control my emotions and provide a, a buffer space, I guess, for a patient going to a clinic. Another reason I wanted to do this to be a better ally, women have been on the forefront of reproductive justice forever. So being better about being there and showing up. There was one point where I was talking to a patient companion. A uh, protester basically body checked me. So that was pretty physical. Then I believe it was the week or two later while I was walking with the patient, got physical with, with me, like brushing and pushing against me. And after he was arrested, by the FBI and charged with FACE Act violations for those two incidents. The babies have been murdered every day in America. What the protesters will look for a way to get a, an emotional response. Same thing with rape. So if you support rape, you support abortion. Right? That would be consistent. Man, if you get emotional your concentration is now on the protester and not on the patient. My mom taught us that my body is my own and I get to decide what I want to do with it, who's allowed to touch it, and the decisions I get to make about my own medical choices. So I'm an attorney. I had wanted to start practicing reproductive justice and reproductive rights law. So I was just getting a bunch of no's. I was getting really down and frustrated and I just decided I had to do something. I decided to become an escort. The first day that I was an escort was the day after dubs. It was, it was a dark day. We've had people from all over the country, from Texas, from Florida. I've heard their stories which is one of the things that's so frustrating to me, the, the assumptions from the anti-choice people as to who these people are that are coming to these clinics. I mean, it's none of their business, but that being said, there's so many assumptions out there that abortions are just for birth control, right? And it's just not the case. You know, I've met women who are devastated that they have to be in the clinic and are having this abortion because it's not what they wanted, but they had to make a decision because it's their life or the life that's growing inside them. And, and they have other children, and they, you know, there are other reasons that they need to live, right? And it's, it's just heartbreaking. I've hugged people who are just bawling. It's, you just don't know. And it's just infuriating that people think they know better. This is one small way in which you can really support the, these women that have to make these really hard choices.